welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic where I had a couple of requests actually this morning to take a look at different puzzles um, but this was one of the puzzles we've been asked to look at and it's the uh, New York Times hard Sudoku from January the 6th 2019 um, so I'm going to look at it now and we'll see see what we need to do to solve it now with um, a New York Times hard Sudoku it is normally absolutely fine to solve it using what I'll call standard pencil marks. Um, so what are standard, standard pencil marks? Well this is where if I can identify in a 3x3 three three block exactly two positions where a number can go uh, then we can pencil mark that in. So let's look for example at this 7 and this 7 and how they interact on this 3x3 three three block. You can see that there's only two positions left for a 7 and so what I would propose to do is to just notate that. So I'm not going to be filling in all the possibilities that can go in each square of the grid. That is not efficient. I'm just going to be filling in these little pencil marks where a number can go into two positions. And for, for a puzzle of this difficulty, this ought to be absolutely sufficient to solve it. But we'll see. So this 5 here, this interacts on this 3x3 three three block. And it means there's going to be a 5 in one of these three squares. So where does the 5 go in this 3x3 three three block? Well, it can only go in one of these three squares. And look, we have a 5 here. So this square here has to be the 5. Let's put that in. And accordingly, we can make a couple of pencil marks up there. Because there's only two places now for a 5 to go in this 3x3 three three block. Because of this 5 and this 5. You should always try and use this sort of... Uh, construction in the grid it's so powerful so immediately my mind or well, my eyes are drawn to this 4 because I can see that it's going to have to be a 4 in one of those two positions and then this 4 because there's going to have to be a 4 in one of those two positions um, let's just see if we can pick up a few more given numbers there normally are a few given numbers yes 4 4 4 and 4 here, so where can we place a 4 in this 3x3 three three block? Only in this square. And ah, 7s, look, we have a 7s uh, and 9s. We have a similar arrangement of 7s and 9s in the grid. So this 7 and 9 arrangement means that the 9 pencil marks in this 3x3 three three block are going to go in exactly the, oh, no, they're going to go in exactly the same place. As the seven pencil marks. So now in effect we have a seven nine pair in this block because we know the seven will go in one of two positions and the nine will go in one of two positions so no other number could possibly go in either of these cells. So now we can look across and see whether there are any numbers missing from this three by three block that we can make use of because and there is one it's this eight because we've already got three here We've already got a 5 here. So this 8 is the powerful number because it comes across here and allows us to pencil mark 8s into those two positions. So they're the only two positions left that an 8 can fit into in this 3x3 three three block. And now I'd certainly be looking downwards. Let's look at how this 3x3 three three block works with given this 8 pair we've discovered. So there's no 8 in this cell. And because of this 8, there's no 8 in either of these two cells either. So the 8 here is locked into two positions. And that nearly looks useful. Just going to check. 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. Hmm. Okay, ah, now let's have a look at this a bit more now. So now let's look at this 3x3 three three block. And again, we've got a similar thing going on to the, the 7 and the 9. Because look at this 2, 4. We have a 2 and a 4 here, and a 2 and a 4 here. So where can we place a 2 and a 4 in this 3x3 three three block? Well, there are only two positions left that can take a 2 and a 4. That one, and that one. So again, we know these two squares will be 2 and a 4 in some order. And we need to be using the missing numbers now. So 3, 4, and 2 here, well, that's no good because we've already got a 3, a 4, and a 2. But this 1 is powerful, look, because this slides across. We can pencil mark 1s into those two positions. 
Now I wonder, what does that tell us? What? Uh, yeah, okay. So let's have a look at row 5. We've, the missing numbers are 1, 2, 4, and 6. So if we look at this square, well, this could still be a 1 or a 2. This square could still be lots of things. This square, 1, 2, 4, and 6 missing. So we have a 2 and a 4 here. So in theory, this could be a 1 or a 6. But look, just pencil mark the 1s in. So this cannot be a 1. And the only number left is a 6. So this is a 6. And now, let's use this 6 again on this 3x3 three three block. Where can we place a 6 in this 3x3 three three block? Well, now it's forced into one of those two positions because effectively these two positions are ruled out because we know they will contain the numbers 2 and 4. Um, so can we use the 6s any further? Let's see anything immediate. One, two, four. Let's check row 8 because it's got a lot of given numbers in it. 1, 2, 6 and 7. So this square here is a 1 or a 7. Ah, where can we place a 2 in this in this row? Can't place a 2 in either of these two squares because of this 2. We can't place a 2 here because of this 2 up here. So this square here has to be a 2, and that's called a hidden single. Because um, you can only really identify that it's possible or it's forced to be a 2, not by concentrating on the square itself. If we were just to concentrate on this square and ask ourselves what could go into it, we would look across the row, we could see we need the numbers 1, 2, 6 and 7, we'd look upwards and we'd only find a 9, so in theory, looking at the cell itself, we could place the numbers 1, 2, 6 and 7 in, in this cell. It's only by considering the whole row that we identify that actually the 2 is forced into this square. And we can pencil mark some twos over here because of the twos in these two positions. Uh, now let's check. Uh, okay, well let's let's look again at this row. We need now we need the numbers one, six, and seven. This square here. So let's just pencil them in and have a look. So one, six, and seven. We have a six here, so it can't be six. And we have a 1 pencil marked here, so it can't be 1. So this square is forced to be a 7. And that's going to be very nice, because now this square cannot be a 7, so it, it can only be a 9. We knew it was a 7 or a 9. And then this square must be the 7, because it was one of the only two positions left for a 7 in this 3x3 three three block. 7, 7, so let's do some pencil marking. 9, 9, so it must be a 9 in one of these two positions, but we have a 9 here, so 9 there. Where can we place a 9 in this 3x3 three three block, given we have a 9 here and here? We know there must be one in one of these two squares, but look, there's a 9 there. So we can place the 9 in this position, and pencil mark the 9s into those two squares. Now the missing numbers in row 8 now are 1 and 6. Well, we can't place a 6 in this one because of this 6. So this one must be a 1. This must be a 6. Now our earlier pencil marks told us that in this 3x3 three three block there's a 6 in either this position or this position. Well, this 6 here confirms it must be this position. Let's remove that pencil mark. And we still have to place the numbers 1, 5 and 8 into these three squares, looking at column 8 now. Therefore, where, where can the 9 go? Well, it can only go here. Let's place the 9, pencil mark the 9s. Where can a 3 go in this block now? Well, given there's a 3 here, it can only go there. Which means that it must be a 3 in one of these two positions. But this 3 means it must be here. The moment we do that, we can write in the 2, because we knew the 2 was in one of these two positions. So once one of those positions is taken, we know it must be in the other position. Let's continue. So we've got pencil marked 2s into these two squares. Look at these two 3s here on this square. 
We know there's a 3 now in one of these two squares, but we have a 3 here. So let's put that in. There now must be a 3 in one of these two squares, but again we have a 3 here. So the puzzle is now starting to yield a little bit. Again, the middle block now. 3 here and a 3 here. So there's a 3 in one of these two positions. This 3 here means it must be up there. And, ah, and the New York Times app, the way it works is once you complete a number, i.e. you get a number in every 3x3 three three block, the font changes. Which can be a bit disturbing the first time you see it, but um, that's what's going on there. So my eyes are now really being drawn, I suppose, both to column 3 and row 1. So let's take a quick look at row 1 first. So 5, 7 and 8 to place. Uh, ah, yeah, where can we place a 7 then? Again, this is a hidden single, so there cannot be a 7 here because of this 7. There cannot be a 7 here because of this 7. So there's only one position left for a 7, and that's there. You can see immediately that I think the puzzle is probably solved now, but we'll continue just to check. Where can we place a 7 here? Well, it's only going to be there. Therefore, this square must be a 6 because it's the missing number. That's going to allow us to pencil mark 6s into those two squares because of this 6 and this 6. So now we have this 5-6 pair in this 3x3 three three block. So the missing numbers must be 1 and 8 in these two squares. And we have a 1 here, look. So that's going to have to be 1. That's going to have to be 8. Pencil mark 1s in this 3x3 three three block interact with a 1 here to force a 1 there. Therefore, we know these two squares have to be uh, all new. And it's pencil mark fives and eights like that. Um, and this square here, because of this seven, this can't be a seven. Let's remove that. This must be the seven, and this must be a, this must be a one. Um, and then we can. We can use the way the 1 is going to interact on this 3x3 three three block look because that's going to allow us to pencil mark 1s into those two squares which gives us a 1-4 pair and it means there must be a 1 in one of those two squares. So we get a 1-4 pair over here as well which means these two squares must be 2 and 8 because they're the only numbers left in the block. So we can pencil mark 2s in slide up and look here, can this now be a 2? No, because we know there's a 2 in one of these two positions in column 9. So, oops, I'll do what I did yesterday. So this is now 4, this must be the 2. Pencil mark 2's there, look. Pencil mark 4's into those two squares because of the 4 here. I'll probably now I'd take a look well, let's just complete the pencil marks over here because I can see that we have an 8. So this one must be the 8, this must be a 2. And therefore the 2 and the 8 here are, un are resolved by this 8. This one's going to have to be 8, this one will be the 2. Now where can we place a 2 in this 3x3 three three block? Well, there's only one square left it can go, and that's there. Which means this must be the 2 up here, and the 2's change colour. This must be the 6 now, just to complete row 4. Uh, and I think we're very nearly there, but we'll, as I say, we'll just finish it off. Now this square here, where can we place a 5? Well, it can only go in this square, so let's put that in. 5, probably take a quick look at column 9 now, or column 5, I should say. Um, so you can see we need the numbers 6, 7 and 9. Now where can we place a 7? can't go here, can't go here because of this 7, so it can only go here. So we know we need these two squares are 6 and 9 in some order. And we have a 6 here, so this one must be the 9, this must be the 6. Now the moment I put the 6 in, look, I know that the 9 must be here. And then I know the 4 must be here because of the earlier pencil marks. This is one of the advantages of using pencil marks like this. You can get a real flurry of information. Unwind the 4 and the 1 now. This 4 means it must be in that order. Oh, no, no, no. Pencil mark 1's down there. 
uh, an 8 can only go into this square in this 3x3 three three block. Let's do that. That means this is an 8 and this is a 5. We need the numbers 5 and 7 into these two squares and we have a 7 here. 7, 5, 5, 6. Now where can we place a 5 in this block? Well we have a 5 here and a 5 here and a 5 here. So only in this square. Oh, and the 5's change colour. You can see these two squares here have got to be 1 and 8 which means that this must be the one up here, 1 and 4, the 4's change colour and a little, well you can see this has to be an 8 in fact I'm not going to bother with uniqueness to prove it it's, and this one, hopefully if the puzzle's worked and the font's right, is going to be a 6 so I just wanted to show you that it is absolutely easy to do a New York Times hard puzzle just with a bit of um, uh, Snyder notation as it's called after Thomas Snyder the uh, multiple world Sudoku champion and it's a technique that uh, he recommends he showed me a number of years ago and it's become almost standard for uh, speed solving of Sudoku um, because it is so efficient so thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content we appreciate that and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic